From a TJ that's stocking to one that's rocking. Today on Extreme 4x4, part three of our ultimate Wrangler build. From bulletproof axles to all the goodies that make Jeeps cool. Plus, a family that crawls together also spars together. You aren't relaying what you want. Don't cuss, they can't put it on the TV. everybody, welcome to Extreme 4x4 in part three of our Jeep TJ build. A rig that we can drive every day to work and then on the weekends blasted down the dirt roads to the trails for some serious rock crawling. And then after a good day of four wheeling, instead of throwing this thing on a trailer to get it home, we had to jump behind the wheel and drive it down the highway. Now by the end of the show today, we'll have all these mock-up parts out of here and the thing will be sitting on the shop floor as a true rolling chassis. And to think, it just started as an insurance write-off. We found what we wanted in this 2003 TJ from Davies Jeeps. And although our donor Jeep was very complete, we stripped it down to basically a drivetrain, a frame, and a body tub. An ideal wheelbase for a Jeep is at about 100 inches, and to stretch out our Jeep, we used a complete package from Genrite Off-Road, which includes a front three-link and a rear four-link, as well as longer rocker guards that go hand-in-hand -hand with these heavy-duty crusher corners. And then finally, we installed King coilover shocks on all four corners mounted to some mock-up axles. So the first thing we're going to do today is install some upgraded axle assemblies underneath our Jeep. Now you guys have seen us build a lot of axles here at Extreme. I mean, every project usually has at least two. And we're always putting in larger spline count shafts to make them stronger. And I'm sure some of you guys are wondering why. Well, when you slide an axle shaft into a gear, it may look like all these teeth have lots of area to bite onto when it starts to grip. But if you were to look at that with a microscope, you would see that as the shaft turns, it's only contacting the gear in very small spots as it turns around in its rotation. Now those small spots add up when you have 35 splines on that axle, so therefore you have a lot of contact patch and therefore a stronger axle. And the opposite is true in a low spline count axle. It's not a very big contact patch, therefore not as strong. But what the axle is made out of also makes it stronger. A chrome molly axle shaft, if you could be inside your axle housing when your wheel is bound up, actually deflects or turns on its own axis up to 360 degrees before it even thinks about braking. So when your tires are in that bind, the axle has a little bit more give before it's going to pop. Stock shaft can't turn that far. That's why a set of high spline count good chrome molly axles will make any axle assembly a lot stronger. When it comes to lockers for this project, we had a lot of choices, but we opted for the ARB air lockers both front and rear. And just like any other cool off-road part, you can't really appreciate it until you take a look inside. Now this cutaway shows that when the ARB air solenoid is activated, the locking ring slides over the side gear alignment tab, completely locking it in place. Now, even if the two aren't fully aligned, the locker will still activate, and once the axle turns just in the slightest bit, the locking ring will move into its lock position. Now, once the air pressure is released, the differential works as it normally would, and it will drive and turn just like an open carrier. Now we could have rebuilt this rear axle and made it pretty stout, considering that it's a Dana 44, but we knew that this front assembly was destined for the scrap heap as soon as the Jeep rolled into the shop, because our goal is to make our drivetrain bulletproof. So we called the guys at Solid Axle and they suggested we use their line of TJ Complete Replacement Axle Assemblies. Now the front is a high pinion Dana 44 unit with Alloy USA chrome molly shafts, 30 spline ARB and 488 gears. Now the housing itself is an upgrade from stock with three oil galleries for more lubrication, extra ribs for added strength and yet has more ground clearance than a stock Dana 44. Now these machine surfaces on top of the housing not only make installing suspension parts and steering parts a lot easier, but they're safer because we don't have to weld onto the nodular iron housing. But you don't have to build a custom suspension like we have to get all the benefits of an upgraded axle. 
Solid Axle makes these killer Dana 44 units as direct bolt-in replacements for a Jeep TJ. With all the brackets and the tabs, brake lines, even a rear disc brake setup from Willwood with an integrated emergency brake makes this axle upgrade a super easy installation. We ordered our axles with bare tubes, no brackets, since we have a custom suspension both front and rear. And since this truck is less than five years old, a set of crate axles was the obvious choice. They come with a full warranty and are all new from flange to flange. This will give us peace of mind when driving this Jeep on the interstate and the trail. And with all the link mounts measured and tacked into place, we're a few steps closer to wheels and tires. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4 in Ian's messy office. Well, you know what they say, a clean office is a sign of a sick mind. You know, professional rock crawling is a team sport where spotter and driver need to work together. Things can get pretty hectic, and when your old man is your spotter, things can get very interesting. 21 of the top super mod drivers came to Spring Creek Off-Road Park for the We Rock National Championship. One backup, one cone can set you back 10, 12 places. To get into the six driver, one obstacle title shootout, these men had to endure a brutal qualifier. Stuff out here just breaks. That's part of the sport. Kind of ask yourself, should you go for broke or should you play conservative? to get into that shootout. After winning five stock mod titles, Cody Wagner made the jump to the premier class three seasons ago. We wanted to go against Tracy and Shannon and Jason Pauley and see how good we really were. Competing in the highly competitive Western Division, the California native finished the year third overall. We just wanted to step it up a class to see if we were good or if we were average and we found out we are pretty good and we kind of have an idea where we're headed. At the season's biggest pro rock crawling event, Cody Wagner was ready to join the sports elite. We're here to win. On his first obstacle of the two-day competition, Cody backed up his talk with a near perfect run. Oh, it was great. Yeah, it was a good run. Gave it hell on that first one. Since turning pro in 2001, his father Jim has been out front spotting. <laughs> It's been an honor that he asked me to spot for him, and uh, really exciting. He's who I trust 100% to guide me through really death-defying obstacles. Okay, we're good here. Come on, yes, come on. Driver, driver. Okay, you're good. Just missed it. At 56, Jim may be the oldest spotter, but on the rocks, he proves that age is just a number. He was in pretty good shape, but even got in better shape. He does his heavy hands and his walking, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my dad. It's worked out great. I work hard at it to stay in okay. shape and do what he needs me to do. Yeah, you're good. This is the, quite a challenge for me, and it makes me feel good. Ready for today? Ready. Under the pressure of the Pro Series, even the best relationships get tested. No Four-wheel drive. Hard driver, Cody. We actually got some help. Uh, we had a, 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 I call him a shrink, come in. It's really worked to where, you know, I understand what he's thinking and he understands what I'm thinking. You know, sometimes we still, I mean, like any relationship, have issues, but uh, it's been good. We have both strong personalities and uh, we've learned to somewhat control them. With Cody's wife and daughter cheering them on. I hope that they ace it, not any mistakes then they're happier at the end of the day. They nailed a perfect score on day one's final course. It was great. It was a great end of the first day. Coming into day two, a spot in the title shootout was within their grasp. We're in a good position, third place. Pretty much, we got to run four good courses. My advice today is stay consistent and we'll get through it. Right from the start, the Wagoners struggle. We had three cones, we had eight backs. It was ugly. As the afternoon continued to unravel, the frustration boiled over. I'm trying, Dad. The car's going a different way. You aren't relaying what you want. Don't cuss. They can't put it on the TV. 
I had my tried my dad's line and it didn't really work. We weren't lined up the way we needed to, and then I tried my line, not knowing how close I was to the cone. I hit the cone. So was that my mistake? It was. Falling just outside of the top six, a good run on the final obstacle would keep their shootout hopes alive. We're gonna give it all we got and see how we come out. They were unable to salvage the day, ending the event back in nine. It doesn't always go the way you want it to, and uh, that's part of the game. Just things weren't weren't going as smoothly as they could today. In the competition, there, I mean, you got to be right on. If you're not right on, you'll be a ninth. While the nationals were filled with frustration and disappointment, at the end of the day, blood is thicker than rock. We came out here as a family and we'll leave together as a family and you know we'll talk about it on the 1600 mile drive home and and back to work. Now Cody admitted that this was possibly the worst weekend of competition they've ever had. But with 19 wins in seven years, one bad weekend, not too shabby. These are Ian's favorite boots. I only wear them to karaoke when I'm singing my favorite 80s hairband rock. <laughs> It's all good, man. Hey guys, welcome back to Extreme 4x4. With our Jeep's new axles mounted in place, we can go ahead and slip in a set of wheels and tires into the project. But before we put any tires and wheels in this Jeep, we're going to have to deal with the steering. We had Blue Torch Fab send us one of their Dana 44 high steer kits. It comes with new billet upper arms, conical washers, as well as the misalignment spacers and the tubing adapters for QA1 rod ends. All we have to supply is some DOM tubing. The front end of a Jeep TJ can get a little crowded with everything from the track bar, drag link, steering links, and soon we'll be putting in a hydro assist. So once everything is in, we'll pull the springs from the coilovers, bottom the suspension out, and measure for the bump stop. Okay. Since this is going to be a dual purpose project, we wanted to choose a tire that was going to do well both on and off road. And the obvious decision was going to be the new BFG KM2s, 40 by 14 fives. Now the tread design is a cross between the popular crawler and the original mud terrain with a dual grooving pattern and alternating tread block design. Plus, the super thick sidewall is made with a three ply construction making it 33% stronger to help increase puncture and cut resistance. Now we're going to mount those tires on a set of Allied Racing 17x9 aluminum beadlocks. Now this is a brand new wheel design from Allied and it's got some great features like a machined finish that's not going to need to be polished. The outer beadlock lip is machined into the wheel itself, not a welded on ring. Now the recessed valve stem inside the wheel as well as the extra thick mounting flange make this rim legal to run on core race trucks. Yes, I'm actually going to attempt this again. Tenth time's the charm. We're like 382nd time's the charm. Real, eh? Thank you. Now getting a tire on a rim is extremely difficult. That's why they make machines for it. But for me, <laughs> just look at all of my prior attempts. Lots more to go on our Extreme Jeep TJ, so stay tuned. But right now, it's time for an Extreme 4x4 Tech Tip. Now there's no question that a good set of dimple dies like this one we have here from Light Racing can not only make a piece of flat steel look a lot better, but they can actually make it a lot stronger. The one downfall has always been that you needed to have a press to squish the two dies together. And since not everyone has a 50 ton hydraulic press in their shop, here's one we made out of simple rectangular tubing and a $50 bottle jack. I'll place the jack between the two sections of our homemade press and use the pressure against the top and bottom sections to put the dimple into the sheet. 
So there you go, a pretty good looking speed hole in the plate and all just for $25 worth of scrap steel and a little bottle jack. And the nice thing is, is this setup is portable. We're back on Extreme, and our Jeep is finally sitting on all fours again. Now we can start taking care of a bunch of odds and ends that'll make this Jeep more trail worthy and more comfortable. When you're rebuilding a truck like this, there's always going to be a long list of parts that you're going to really want. And the great thing about Jeeps is there's companies like Quadratech that have all the parts that you need in a one-stop shop. And considering that the Jeep is one of the only vehicles that you can actually mail order a complete new frame for, we knew that we could get everything we needed in one spot. Everything from a new soft top to some suspension seats, a winch, steering wheel, off-road lights, fair lead, ARB air compressor, some tube doors, some hinges, and some skid plates. I mean, the box that stuff came in was as big as a house. I'm going to move into it at the end of the show. First thing to go on is a Ramsey 9500 UT, so if we can't go over the rocks, we can pull ourselves over the rocks. We definitely don't want the airbag to deploy while we're wheeling, so we're going to remove the stock wheel and replace it with a shiny new Grant one. Can't go wheeling at night without some lights, so some rock lights in the back and some Pia's up front. Nothing says awesome like a high lift jack mounted to the hood of your Jeep so everyone at the mall knows you're hardcore. These stainless hinges not only look better, but they're not gonna rust clothes like the stock ones. A set of tube doors will not only look cool, but they'll protect us when we're out on the trail. Although personally I'm a fan of topless wheeling, sometimes when it rains you want a roof over your head, so a soft top will keep us dry. Now considering whenever you're in your vehicle, you're actually sitting in a seat, so a good set of seats makes a lot of sense. And a suspension seat makes even more sense for comfort. Now these Mastercraft Baja RS seats have been all the rage since they first came out because they're actually a recliner seat, which is what the RS stands for. So not only is it easier to get in the back seat, but it also gives you driver comfort. And for a rear seat, we decided to install a Mastercraft rear suspension bench. Now they can make these benches up to 60 inches wide and for vehicles like the TJ have mounts included that will bolt right into the stock location. And the front seats mount directly to the stock seat brackets making this installation easy as pie. Now considering that this TJ came in here basically stock but a little banged up, look at this thing now. What do you think Jess? I think it's looking pretty sick. I think not only does it look like a hardcore wheeler, well it's built like one too. Now even though we could just toss him some drive shafts and hit the trails, this truck has one more trick up its sleeve with the drivetrain. Bet you didn't know the truck had sleeves, did you? Well it does. And up those sleeves is a Hemi. Yeah! 